everyone, welcome back to Patchy Pony Stitcher. It's the 14th of October. I'm Mel and I'm filming from Tasmania, Australia. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, thanks for coming and hanging out with me again today. I've got a few whips to talk, show you, um, some floss storage. I've finally found something that works for me. I've been battling with how to store my floss for each project for a little while now. So it's finally, and I'll share that with you and, and how that's working for me. And then I'll talk about my upcoming projects. So let's get started with my whips. Currently I've got seven whips on the go. Um, I've only worked on three in the last, since my, sorry, I've worked on four since my last video, since I chatted to you last. Some of those you didn't see in my last video. So my first whip is a cell that I'm participating in um, that's hosted by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Um, Sally designs um, a mystery cell and every two weeks we get a new part released. So this one's called Stitchmas and it's obviously a Christmas related stitch and it comes every two weeks we get a new part released. So I'm a little bit behind so I'll show you where I'm up to. Actually I'll just get something to put behind it. Okay, so this is where I'm up to currently. At the moment, there's been six baubles released and I'm only on to my fourth bauble. This is really my traveling project. I take it with me in the car while I'm waiting for the kids at their sporting activities to finish or their training. So obviously it's the 12 days of Christmas. So we've got partridge in a pear tree, two doves, three French hens, and currently I'm doing four Four. Oh, what is that one? You'll know what it is. Oh, five golden rings, four turtle. Do no, you'll you'll know what the if you know the the Christmas song, you'll know what it is. So we've still got a little bit of way to go with it. It's a nice easy one, especially in the car to be stitching on. Generally, I I will do the whole circle first. I've only just done my half crosses just to give me a guideline, just to make sure I get that bit right. And then it's easier to do my counting in for the birds that are in the center. So I'm enjoying that one, but I do need to catch up. I'd like to get that one finished before Christmas as I don't have a Christmas um, stitch that I've done. I've, so it'd be nice to have something of mine up and on display for the season at the beginning. So hopefully we'll get along with that one. Oh, I must remember to tell you what I've, the fabric and what I'm using. I just keep forgetting, so I do apologise. So this one's on 14 count cream Ada, and I'm using DMC threads, the colours that are called for. I have made a little bit of a boob with some colour um, choices, but it, it's still the called for colours, but I just accidentally flipped them around. Not that it makes much of a difference anyway, so I wasn't going to pull it all out because I put the pink bit in the blue bit. So I just swapped them around and kept going. So that one's coming along nicely. The next whip I have, oopsies, is my Hawk Run Hello Sal. That is hosted by Shell from Tranquil Stitches. Uh, from Amy, Love, Amy from Amy Loves Toads is also hosting it and Jeannie Swartz. So I have picked farms from Hawk Run Hollow, which I love. It's coming along so well. I was, I was really looking forward to doing this stitching that I really had to hold back and not start it early. So in my last video, I showed you my fabric that I tea dyed and coffee dyed because I wanted my fabric to look like an old Hessian bag which I'm really thrilled with because it, it's coming along nicely. And it, I haven't got all the fabric out because Hawk Run Hollows are huge. So I've got it all tucked out in my Q-snap. Uh, so this is the first block of my Hawk Run Hello Sal. So you can see the fabric at all, and it's, it's coming up pretty well in the light. In my last video, it was looking very dark as a full piece of fabric, but this is looking a bit more true to what it looks like. So I have started my very first block. Now, I'm gonna to need to get the picture out because I've made changes. Bear with me for one moment. Sorry. I'm gonna try not to edit as much as I do because it takes up so much time. 
So this is the Hawk Run Hello in its entirety. And I'll squeeze into what the block that I'm working on, if it will focus. Focus. So I'm working on this block here. And as you can see, it says Hawk Run Farm. And all the cows are the same colour. So I'm going to be making little modifications in mine just to personalise it a bit more. So as you can see, I've got, diff I've got alternating cow colours because previously we live on a hobby farm and we've had cows before. So we've had uh, Murray Greys and we've also had um, Belted Galloways. So I thought I'd personalise that a bit and make it more into to our colours. Now I did actually do a couple of the darker cows, the brown ones before I decided I'd do this. And Murray Greys are technically a bit lighter in colour, but I thought I'll just keep going with that because I've done a few of them already. And the words, you'll see that I haven't used Hawk Run Hello, sorry, Hawk Run Farm. I've changed mine to Tom, Dick and Harry Lane. Why, you ask? <laughs> we live rurally and we've got an internal driveway that we share with three other properties. And ironically, one of one of the one of the neighbours, his name's Tom, and one of the other um, owners of the other property, his name's Richard Dick. It's short for Richard in Australia. I'm not sure if, if that's the case in America, but um, so Richard gets short to Dick, and I've got a son called Harrison. So ironically. There's a Tom, Dick and a Harry that live up our little road. So at the end of our road, we've got a little sign made up called Tom, Dick and Harry Lane. So I thought that was very appropriate because we don't have a property name for our actual farm ourselves. So I thought that was a bit more appropriate for me to change that to Tom, Dick and Harry Lane, which I'm really happy with. It looks, I'm, it just, I'm thrilled with the way this is turning out. I've still got a long way to go just on this one block. I'll just give you another. So I've still got to do a fence and some sunflowers and some more birds. So I've, on this fabric, it's a 16 count Ada, which I tea dyed and coffee dyed. Smells like coffee for all those coffee lovers. A really strong smell. And I've generally, I'm using the called for DMC in the project. However, I am part of a Floss of the Month Club where we get sent um, weeks dye works Flosses, so I've, and I haven't had a chance to use a lot of variegated flosses. And also these lovely threads, I'd like to use them. So I, with the green, the light green color that the cows are on at the bottom, it calls for 3053, but I am changing that to Weeks Dye Works Artichoke. So it's not too much of a difference not too much variegation, unfortunately, in the artichoke, but it gives me an opportunity to actually use some of the, the week's dye works in my project, which is fun. But then what next one, where there's a little fence running under the, cat, under the word, so that's the next bit I'm about to start. It calls for 3829, and I'm gonna substitute that for amber, in the week's dye work. So it's close enough and it's a fence. So really it doesn't matter if it's a little bit lighter, but I'm looking forward to doing the variegation. I've just got to remember to do one whole cross at a time. Um, because with the grass where I was using, so where I've done the grass here, I did find myself doing half stitches all the way across just out of habit, even though it's not really variegated the artichoke it still has a tiny bit so I, I may have lost some of the variegation by doing a full sorry a half cross all the way across and then returning and coming back and finishing the half crosses so I've got to make a mental note to slow down while I'm doing the fence so I can get the true varie variegation of this lovely week's dye works amber so I'm really looking forward to that but I have had a chance to play with some variegated floss um, with another project, which I'll show you. So I'll just pop this one, this one down. So my next whip that I've been working on is another Adventure Awaits sal called, sorry, <laughs> is another Caterpillar cross stitch 
mystery sale which is called adventure awaits so i've shown you this before in my pro in my videos where i've started you didn't get to see it last video because i hadn't done anything there i there hadn't been a new releasement so i'll show you a photo of where that was when i in that sorry i'll show you a photo of where that was last time you saw it here Okay, and this is where we're up to now. So as you can see, I've added in Australia. We've got the Opera House, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, some New Year's Eve fireworks. Now Tassie, which is where I am, right down the bottom here, was just a little dot because we are only an island. But I'll see if I can get it close enough for you to see. I've added in a little Tassie Devil right at the bottom and New Zealand didn't have anything either and so I've added a little sheep in there because sheep are iconic in New Zealand so I've added all that in now when I was watching my last video where this one featured I realized and I'm really devastated about this and I hope I'm going to be able to find a fix I realized I had a dirty old mark on my fabric look at it not happy Jan so I washed it hoping it would come out no I'm thinking it, it feels like candle wax like it's actually a little bit crunchy when you it, it, at first I thought oh it, it's a drink um, but I think it might be oil based or, or wax based <sighs> not happy so there was a dolphin on the pattern that was in here. So I've held off on doing the dolphin in case this part is not covered by South America. I've got a feeling it's not gonna be covered by South America. And I'm really, really annoyed at myself for not being more careful. I had it in a Q snap, so I'm not really sure how I got it on there so if anyone's got any super duper ideas that can help me get that out without knowing what it is I'd be most appreciative because my dolphin might have to turn into a southern right whale being so close to Antarctica I don't think there's dolphins down near Antarctica and speaking of Antarctica this is where I used my variegated floss another week's dye works one so the borders of all the countries are light green and dark green and so was Antarctica but I really liked the snowflakes, so I changed the snow, the border of Antarctica with a blue. Oh gosh, that looks terrible. I'm gonna cover that. <laughs> um, so I changed the border of Antarctica into a nice variegated blue just to give it more of an icy feel. And I think that has come out beautifully. I'm really happy with it. And again, I'm, I had to be super careful doing one cross, one full cross, another full cross. Um, to get the full variegation so I was really really pleased with that and then there was that oh I'm sure that everyone's had times where they've spilt something or so I've heard of people putting holes in their fabric so it's not that bad and it is fixable by stitching over it but I I don't want something to look squished in if it doesn't have to so if you've got any magic ideas ladies i'd be more and then happy to hear about them because yeah totally disappointed with that but anyway but the pattern i'm loving it it's great it's a great pattern sally uh, really enjoying this one i just i'll be sad when it ends because it's one of those ones that i look forward to and as soon as it comes out i get started on it so really happy with that one now my final whip that I've been working on since my last video is my sampler of firsts. So if you're new to my channel, I'll just quickly explain what this is. So it's a, I haven't done a sampler before. I don't think I'm a sampler kind of girl. Um, so this sampler is my first sampler on my own first hand dyed fabric. There's no pattern to this, I'm making it up as I go. Um, and there's lots, so there's lots of firsts for me in this. So what the idea behind this sampler is, it's 
I'm a bit of a concert junkie. I love my concerts. And I keep all my ticket stubs and I've got them all framed. So this is going to be a companion piece for my ticket stubs. So I'll pop a photo in where I, where I, should, where I was last video. So I've got my first row of all my artists in place. So I've done two more. So there's the first row that you would have seen. And then I've got my next two. Oops, excuse my loose thread. So I have Miss Lady Gaga and I also have Guy Sebastian. So I'm gonna put some photos in here of what I'm trying to emulate in the cross-stitching of the artist. So I'll pop those photos in now. So for non-Australian watchers, you probably may or may not know who Guy Sebastian is. Um, so that's, I know the eyebrows look very feminine, but he's, they're, very, they're very iconic to who Guy Sebastian is. So I had to put the eyebrows in. But isn't it looking fabulous? Can you just imagine like another 10 lines of artists? I'm so pleased with how this is coming along. But there's little bits and pieces and like especially with the wording of Guy Sebastian I couldn't quite line that up really because his name is so long but I thought hey at the end of the day there's no rules with this sampler it's my own creation so if I'm happy with it that's all that matters <clears throat> but I wanted to tell you about Lady Gaga's so she's wearing a sparkly, you can't really see, oh, maybe you can see the sparkles. I'm not quite sure in this light. So she's wearing a sparkly purple little number. And I had used a bit of Krynic with pink's red in her pants. I used a red Krynic and also I've used a silver type of Krynic here. Wasn't really a fan. So I had tried DMC... What is it? Eight, no, sorry, DMC 3837. And you can see it's a little bit sparkly. And I really actually prefer these metallics over the Krynic. They tend to go through the fabric a lot more and they don't break as much. I was finding the Krynic kept breaking if it was too long. Whereas the DMC, it does hold a bit better and runs through the fabric. So for me as a personal choice, if I had sparkly things, I'd probably go tend to go towards the DMC brand rather than the Krynic, only because I've had more success with it. And in the light, oh, I wish you could see how sparkly. Can you see how sparkly that is if I turn it towards the light? Oops, whoa. So it sparkles a lot more than this red Krynic does in pinks tights but yeah so I'm really okay I'm not gonna move you back now so <laughs> sorry guys I might just need to readjust now that we've done a little bit of a bounce around yeah so I'm really happy um I, I've heard a lot of people say that that well not a lot of people I've heard people say they don't like the DMC metallics I quite like them, but personal choice. And again, no rules, sampler of first. So stay tuned for my next artists. As you can see, I've got a bit of fabric to cover. And yes, I probably can do it quite easily. I'm only up to 2013 and I really didn't start going to a lot of concerts until about 2015. And I've got one next week going to Melbourne to go see Taylor Swift so I'm super excited about that I like myself a little bit of Swifty so very excited and uh, she'll probably make two appearances on this because I've seen her before so <laughs> oh well <laughs> so that's my whips I do have a couple of others in progress but you have I haven't done anything on them since my last video so there's no point me going into those ones 
Now the next thing I wanted to talk about is a retreat. Oh, I'm so excited. I got an invitation to StitchCon and I didn't make my payment on time because I really wasn't sure what I, where I'd be and what I'd be doing next year. So that lap, so I put myself back on the wait list and I was like, oh damn, I should have just done it and gone with it. But I just, I couldn't commit at the time before the deadline was. So probably have missed out on StitchCon 19. And it's a lot to justify to the partner that you wanna go overseas for a weekend of stitching. <laughs> um, yeah, he was, yeah, I didn't even bring up the whole, the whole conversation. My son is a fanatic Cincinnati, or the Bengals, is it Cincinnati? It is Cincinnati Bengals fan. And I was sort of gonna use that as going, well, I could take you over to the football and we could go to Cincinnati and go to the home ground. It's not football season when stitch con's on. Buck up. Otherwise I could have sort of done, could have had a weekend away. Well, not a weekend, I would have made a full two weeks of it. But I could have sort of used that as an excuse to go to Cincinnati, to stitch con. But that's not gonna happen. Unless for some miraculous reason I get another, another uh, Guernsey at maybe getting a spot. But I think it's gonna be pretty full. So, I got um, a newsletter from Linen and Threads, which is an Australian um, company, and they're holding a Plum Street Sampler Retreat in New South Wales in November next year. So, I quickly got myself a spot in that retreat because it's only a two and a half hour flight from Tassie up to New South Wales. Um, so, it's held in Terrigal, which is in the central New South Wales coast, beautiful part of the world. Terrigal. So I'm looking forward to attending that next year with Paula Stewart. So how cool is that going to be that Paula Stewart will be there over the weekend? So if you're an Aussie floss tuber or an Aussie watcher and you're going to the retreat, send me a message. I can't, I'll, let's get excited together. I can't wait to go to a, it'll be my first retreat because down here in Tassie, I don't have anyone to stitch with. I stitch solo. So it'd be great to be with like-minded people getting excited about the same thing. So super duper excited about November next year. So stay tuned, I can't wait. So again, if you're going, let me know. I'd really be interested in, in chatting and catching up and finding a roommate for the retreat. So it's the Plum Street Samplers Retreat hosted by Linen and Threads. So I can, I'll pop the Linen and Threads uh, link below if you're interested in checking it out, if you weren't even aware it's on. So, down in the description box if you're interested. Now, the last so, I've just finished my video and realised that I didn't talk about the floss storage as I said I would at the beginning of the video. So, I'm going to insert that here for you now and then I'll talk about my upcoming plans. When I first began cross stitch, this is how I would store all my flosses. Just in a shoe box with envelopes with the number in the corner, so I could easily find what I wanted because I didn't have the access to the, the containers or the bobbins. So what I would do is use what I needed to off the floss. So I've pulled a skein, pulled a thread, cut it, and then have my strands that I'm partially using. And then I keep them in the envelope when I've finished with them, back in numerical order so I could find them. But, as we get busier and we've got more whips, we've got more and more flosses. So hence more and more shoe boxes. So that wasn't working for me. So what I've been doing now, so I've started bobbinating. I tried bobbinating years ago, but I really didn't like having to wind and unwind every time I wanted a bit of floss. So what I'm doing in this particular, so I've got one of these per project. I've got the colours bobbinated, unwind it, cut it, and then when I finish, what, so what I haven't completed, I'm not rewinding that. I'm just popping that in the empty hole in the container. Can keep any extra skeins that I need for the project without having to bobbinate them. Extra bobbins in there and all the flosses are easy to access. So when I wanna go take it on the travelling, so if I'm travelling with it, 
or if I'm going somewhere ready to go without the big box of floss. So this is working for me beautifully. It'd be interesting to know what everybody else does for each project because I was finding the envelopes in each project bag was horrendous. So I'd love to hear your ideas. So when I first started bobbinating my flosses, I would take off the, the labels, write it on the bobbin, and then I would just try to get much of a circle as I possibly can. And generally I would place this on my lap or on the floor. And then I would start bobbinating. But with this particular method, and you'll probably see what will happen, it will begin to knot up underneath with the skein of floss. And I'll try to get it as even as possible over the bobbin. Okay, so now we're starting to run into problems where it's dancing around underneath me and I'm starting to get knots, so forth. And this was driving me insane. So I did find a, another way. I tried to find some tutorials on how to bobbinate, but I guess because it's quite a simple thing, there's not many tutorials on it. So what I found, the best method that works for me, fresh skein of floss, take off the numbers, Again, open it up and put it on my wrist. And then find the end and drag all the floss off so it's laying on a pile already untangled. I hope you guys can see that. All untangled in one long line. So then, when I'm bobbinating, I don't get that dancing around of the, whoops, hang on, let me restart that. So then while I'm bobbinating, I'm not getting the tangly dancing mess on my lap or on, on, the, on the ground or on the couch, depending on where I'm bobbinating. So I find this way, by actually undoing the whole entire skein first, that I'm able to get a much smoother bobbinate, well, much quicker really, because it's already off and it's gonna make a liar of me. There we go. No knots and all of a whole 30 seconds, opposed to now having to deal with knots on the old way. So I don't know how you guys did it, but that's I'm finding that by undoing the whole skein first and then bobbinating, it works for me. A quick video. The last thing I wanted to chat about is my plans. Seven whips, ooh, it's a lot. Some people talk about 50, 60, 80 whips, and that to me, oh, that just, Oh, it makes me stressed just thinking about it. I find it difficult to spread my time between seven because I just want to do them all. And I've got a little pile of um, patterns that I'm accumulating and I'm trying not to start them. However, I'm have, I do have a start plan for the 1st of November with Shirl from Tranquil Stitches. Hi, Shirl. Uh, we've been chatting lately and... Oh, I love you, Cheryl. You're so much fun. And I really, I really enjoy our little conversations that we have via email. It's great. Um, so we've decided to start, because she announced in one of her videos that she had the pattern for Oz by Oritor, Oritore TM. Ori TM, that's right, which is out of print. But fortunately, I had the pattern too, plus I've got the Alice pattern by Ori TM. So I'm, and I've been trying to hold off starting them because I know it's going to be a pattern that I'm not going to be able to put down. So anyway, but um, Cheryl wants to get hers started and I said, well, let's do it. To well, actually, no, I think Cheryl said, let's do it together. And I said, yep, 
done, we're on. So the 1st of November, Cheryl and I are gonna be having a stitch along with um, Oz by Ori TM. So if you've got the pattern or you can get hold of the pattern and you'd like to join us, let us know. It's gonna be, it, it's super cute. I'll insert a picture here because the pattern on the chart is so small and it's a paper chart. So I'll put a photo, a close up photo in here. Isn't it sweet? It's just a Quaker style, little motifs. It's not, boom, this is um, Alice, not Alice, um, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, but it's got lots of little things and the Alice one is just as beautiful. So I'm gonna do uh, mine on an opalescent, my first opalescent fabric and my first even weave. So I'm hoping that being Quaker and like little motifs, it's gonna be a bit easier for me to learn on even weave. So this is my fabric of the month from Sparklies. I hope you can see the sparkle. So it's an opalescent light blue and it's just got a little bit of mottling, but I've got enough to do both pieces, both charts on the one piece. So they'll match and be companion pieces. So looking forward to that and the blue because Alice in Wonderland, her dress is blue and Dorothy's dress is blue. So I'm going to try and use as much of the same variegated flosses in both. So they do match, but they've got their own little personalities and, and motifs that define them for each story that they are. So once again, opalescence. Oh, you can see it there. Doesn't that look super sweet? And being both of them are... A very magical type of story so with a little bit of bling I think they're gonna look awesome on my opal essent even weave from sparkly so I'm really really looking forward to starting it's gonna be a learning process it's probably gonna be a slow process doing something on even weave um, but I've got to I've got to do it sometime so looking forward to that and doing it with Cheryl and having the support there <laughs> Of, um, of starting something a little bit foreign. So it's gonna be great. So I'm not gonna be starting anything else before that because I, my, my Adventure Awaits sale, I think that's got another two or three releases. Hopefully by Christmas, I'll have the Christmas Stitchmas done, which will reduce me back to six. And then Alice will become, sorry, not Alice, Oz will become, seven so i really don't know if i could cope with more than seven but we'll see probably won't be able to help myself and do another christmas one as well while, while it's christmas um i've got a few patterns in my stash that i've been wanting to start but holding back because it's one christmas one at a time is enough so that's me done for my october update um so i'm finding monthly updates are probably going to work better for me than or well, three weeks to a month um, are going to work better for me than weekly because I just I don't get enough time to show you what I'm doing in just a week it's going to be oh look I put 100 stitches in <laughs> which is really not that interesting so I think I'll do uh, three to three to four week updates so I look forward to seeing you mid-November and I'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of Christmas happening by then. So enjoy the rest of October and for everyone in America, have a fantastic Halloween. Sort of miss out here in Australia. We don't celebrate it and it looks like so much fun. It really does. So I'm very envious that you guys celebrate your seasons like you do. So we miss out. I when I say we miss out, we do have a little bit of things in the shops and, and but people don't decorate here in Australia like you guys do. So it looks like I'm a big Christmas person. I splash out at Christmas with decoration. So I know if I was in America, I'd probably do the same for Halloween as well and Easter. Um, so looking forward to seeing all your Halloween um, stitching and also all your stories of Halloween. I want to see some costumes, guys, because we don't dress up here. We're so boring. So if you've got costumes that you're wearing for Halloween, give us a gander and, and, give, and show, what, show us what you're wearing. 
for your trick or treating with your kids or parties or what so forth. So enjoy and I'll see you in November. Bye.